bloke said to me yesterday, yeah, he said that some, uh, you know, the fall always strikes him as like six talented people almost like uh, fighting against each other, you know, musically. And uh, I said, yeah, that's probably why it's good, you know. So we are the fall and we're headed back over to Johnny Peel tonight, BBC One. And we're going to be listening to or starting it off with our 1986 session, which was recorded. See, when was this recorded? June 29th, 1986. John Peel session number 10. Four yep. tracks, hot after shave bop. R.O.D., Gross Chapel, G.B. Grenadiers, and U.S. 80s and 90s. How do you like this sesh? It's a good session. Um, I think I prefer the next uh, session 11 that we're going to do. do. Yeah, I think so. I, it's, it's a one's a wild one. Yeah, I was about to say it. it's it's wild. <laughs> that the, the choices, it kind of caught me off guard that session eleven, but I like the session ten. Yeah, no, I think it, I, I, they play well. They're they're different enough from the from the studio releases that I think it gives you something interesting. I'm going out on a limb and I'm saying I actually like these first three songs. Actually, I think I like all of these versions. Better than the album versions. I mean, I feel like that's a common trend for us. Um, mm -hmm. I think it is. It is a I, pattern. I think it falls back just to the fall being a live band, right? That was kind mm -hmm. of where the, where they wanted to be, what they found interesting. Um, I think we're slowly coming to realize, just from our perspective, the fall are not an album band. They are that live band, and they are maybe even a better four or five song EP type of band. I think it's just a a more digestible, easier to digest. I mean, I want it all. I want a lot. <laughs> I want all, and I'm thankful for all of it. But I think that four, five. Actually, I want. I would like one extra on this. But I'm talking about an EP length. Yeah, I mean they they yeah. were the the ten inch masters, right? They they are the ten inch masters. So good, and live, and not, I think when they go into the studio, they sometimes have too much time where they're overthinking it, and they're they're second guessing themselves, or they're saying, "I can do that better." Which a lot of the times, the fall is really good when they do it uh, the first time, or they do it live, and they can't hold back the ability for them to do second take. And it's interesting too, because you know how we get into this era and we have multiple takes and then the multiple takes show up on the same album or the multiple takes show up on the B side of the single or sometimes the A side. It's almost like they're not that different, the takes, but it's obvious that a lot of the times that number one take is just it. It's just where it is. It's just what it needs to be. And this session is where it needs to be. Whatever they did, whatever they, um, let's put, can we put this in relation, this June 1986 session 10, in relation to when did the album come out in 1986? Ben Sinister came out 
September 29th. We're getting the preview again of multiple songs and then also, of course, the single, the Hot After Shave Bob. But the the up tempo of all of these songs, it's slightly up tempo. The guitar work is much better. It's much more loose. It's much more ro- rocking and riffing and not just trying to nail a part. It's really kind of in the moment. If there's a just a better presence of the band in these performances and even hot after shave bop which you you know it is what it is it's rocking on this and i actually like it a lot a lot more than the single version um or the the recorded version a lot and then rod it might be i love that song in general and this version is better than the album version because it is it's fucking rolling along really well, but let's just get in gross chapel. Let's just get into it because this is, they're all, they're all good. Let's start up this peel session. Let's tune in to John and let's see what we got to work with from the fall 1986. So right away, you can already tell, I went back because I wanted to listen to the proper recordings and almost every track on this session, the band is a step or two quicker in the tempo. And it sounds natural. Like if you didn't know, you say, oh yeah, that's just how the song goes. But. I suggest going and listening to the other version because the recorded version, because it's just, it's missing that energy. Yeah, I don't know if it's just the fact that Mark does not want to do things over again and the rest of the band is trying to sound as good as they can and it's just, they, they come to a head mm-hmm. um, in the studio or what, but. And I guess I don't under- know what goes on in, at BBC One. Where are they? Are they is it a one and done sort of deal, or do they get to go go back into it? They're in a good mood. Something about going to the BBC studio puts them in a good creative mood because we haven't heard one Peel session that's that's bad. <laughs> you know, we always have questions about why songs were chosen, but that's just natural. The, the performances are never, you know, when they're never <laughs> like, like mindlessly done or not thoughtful. They're always there. They're always delivering. No, I mean, even when Una's walking around in the basement lost, they, you know, they still they delivered. Great. They delivered. I mean, that was the Blue Orchids, but. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's what but, that. but I mean, the same work ethic they were. There's just pro- professionals. The professionalism was still there. Yeah, I guess it's just the excitement of getting to go and, and do it and be on the radio in a in a fashion that they they deem cool and appropriate and, and mm-hmm. awesome versus having to bend over for a, for the label or for you know this somebody else to get played yeah and there was you know they could have been going to any number of stu- at this point they were usually going to good studios but earlier in their <laughs> in their career they didn't have much choice so when they went to bbc studios even though it is a television and music <laughs> studio radio studio um it it's just so much more professional they got probably everything works right it technically works it's not like going to a studio and be like oh we do have this cool thing but you know it's under repair because it's broken you know <laughs> yeah. we, we could record this with much better microphones but those are all broken from the last session so um yeah, uh, we lost most of the cords so we can't actually plug those in right yeah we forgot how that works again or that got blown up and 
Oh, we get into ROD here. And this one even, you know, it's got a rolling along floor tom that is, I, I want it at this tempo. I want it. Yeah, it's, Simon it's, it's way darker too, I, mean, I feel like. It's got an edge to it that you don't get. It makes the, the speed of it, that floor mm -hmm. tom. Mm -hmm. Even the, the drums are panned around, you know, it's just like jumping around, it's cool. And there's a little bit, like I said, something different with the guitar playing where it's not quite trying to just play the riff to play the riff. It is having a little bit more of a, a character added to it. There's interesting mixing on this one where the other guitar is far back and to the left you hear it like it's yeah. the staticky guitar but it's so far in the distance and there are a couple part times during this session and i think the next section session 11 where they mix one instrument really weird like there's a keyboard part i think in one one of the songs that we're going to listen to today and it's so low that you're like, what? <laughs> what was that? What was that? They're just passing me by. Uh, but this song rocks. I like this song. Realm of Just the chord change when it goes up, when you think you're gonna get darker and darker, it goes up and then the, it's like the little stepping off, stepping stone into the chorus and then the chorus just explodes. Very well done. Also, why do you think that he abbreviated this title? I, because it's I, a cool, it's a cool phrase, uh, lyric, right? Title, it's a cool title. Why not put the whole? Yeah, I mean, when especially when the next one is Gross Chapel, Grenad Grenadier, Grenadiers, GB Grenadiers, it's like, they're not afraid <laughs> of long songs. No, so. they're not afraid of long titles. Why do you want to put Rod? I did read that there's another album we're going to be heading into soon, which is The Friends Experiment. And I think there was an alternate title for that album that I forgot what the title was, but it was something, it was a three word thing. And it basically went abbreviated and he wanted to abbreviate, or basically when he thought about it being abbreviated, those three letters are basically the equivalent to something like a high school degree or certificate and he was like no i don't want that <laughs> uh, which is so funny what are you looking at something you got something good no <laughs> i was trying to figure out if if our if our knowledgeable friends that uh the annotated fall had any any theories on rod oh and now we go into another cool song Gross Chapel and Gross Chapel. I like it. I like it a lot. And man, this would be a great EP. These four songs, even though the first and the last song and the next, you know, the last song is US 80s and 90s. And the first song, Hot After Shape Up, are not two of my favorite fall songs, but I think they just work here. They somehow fit together in a strange way, even though the band was probably just like, these four songs are our best right now. Yeah, they all have the kind of the darker undertones that, that carry through well. Um, 
I don't know. Hot after shave, Bob doesn't. No, you're right. It doesn't at all. That's um, why I'm saying the, the and the U.S. '80s and '90s is it's an interesting song, but I'm not really sure. I think Mark thought it was cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of get that topical, vibe. topical, cool vibe, and and maybe yeah. we're just too far removed to see how it was cool, but um, yeah. But you got to have a gross chapel type of song on a peel session that's seven, six, seven, eight minutes. The, this would be just be sweet to hear on the radio, right? Hmm. Yeah. This is, when you're, this is when you're not getting out of the car for pretty much. No. The drums sound so cool. They're so tight. So dry. Well mixed, but then there's like a constant beating of a tom head. It almost sounds like running uh, steps. The pace, the 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 drum head just constantly being hit like it's almost like a runner's gate running away frantic chapel oh yeah we get the keyboard the synth they had to be have to have the fun for the band to go into the BBC Studios and be able to use their equipment to make different sounds. Because I don't remember right now, did Gross Chapel have this same? I don't think it was the same. No. Tone. Keys. What was it more? Organy plus keys on that album. Piano, keys, organ. Yeah, I mean, you let you let old Simon Rogers loose on it with some high quality instruments. It's gonna it's gonna make it pop. Definitely, definitely. And then you, I mean, we got Simon. Uh, oh, we got Simon Wollstonecroft on the drums now, which is great. Change up. Simon Rogers was the secret weapon, I think. And he even goes on to produce, I think it is the Friends Experiment, which I'm actually looking forward to because I have listened to that, but I have not really sunk my teeth in deep. And I'm yeah, looking forward to going deeper. I listened to it uh, a couple of times. Slow down, slow down. Well, don't be you, move, don't be moving ahead. We're only in 1986. I had to I had to listen to the uh, real versions of the Peel sessions, <laughs> so yeah, that's my only option. Yeah, you're right. It's fun to look ahead, but I like to keep like little dark spots, uh, blind spots, so that it's like a true surprise. And know what I was thinking? We should do in because nine the 1990s for me is definitely blind spot. And then once it gets to 2000s i'm back actually that's one of my most <laughs> uh i think well liked eras so I, I do i do feel comfortable with that but 1990s is a blind spot for me and i think it would be fun if we maybe do one album which is just like a fresh listen no pre emptive trying to figure out what's going on <laughs> you know we we'll just sit down throw it on and let's just see what we experience all right going blind yeah blind a blind taste test because i know there's a couple in that decade where i've like i've definitely never listened to that at all so that'll be fun <laughs> and i also have been told by our fellow fall huts out there that the 90s can be kind of a rough rough little stretch of of music at points 
We'll, we'll have to, we'll pick our least favorite album art and we'll go in blind for that one. Yeah, I think that's right, actually. I think that's a great idea. So we already have some sort of thing to think we know what we're basing it off of. So now we're jumping into the final trap on this session, US 80s and 90s. I like the guitar on this. That's just the droney long notes. It's cool. Yeah, this one doesn't doesn't change all that much, but no. Um, Welcome to the 80s, 90s. Welcome to US, 80s, 90s. Welcome to 80s, 90s. Welcome to the 80s, 90s. Welcome to US, 80s, 90s. This does seem like a song that would be a music video. Was it? Yeah. Doesn't it? I could just picture this on MTV. Kind of similar way I felt about the LA track and then it was, but I'm not seeing any music video here. Nope. But I could picture this on MTV. UK, US. Yeah, I feel like you would thought that was really cool if he was shitting all over America and then all the Americans loved his song so much. Yeah, and, and because <clears throat> because this track is so performative in the lyrics, I could just picture him if they could get him to do it, walking through the airport uh, you know walking through the security which back then was you know barely anything and but walking through it and kind of having a swagger to it delivering the lyrics maybe walking down the street going into the liquor store getting his the grocery list that he kind of shout calls out in the middle of the song yeah it might elevate it a little bit for me with a visual, a visual accompaniment of art. Ambition is to walk, to work, not one chance in three million jacks. Like bones of silence, bones of silence. Is that a little kind of telephone sound at the end? Yeah, I wonder how it's getting a little weird with the noises. Huh. A little oh synth. That's cool. I like that. I don't remember that. <laughs> it's almost like the fall doing like a scratch, like a little. Yeah, mix. yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. A little turntable scratching in a different way. Honestly, it's the, my favorite part of the song is just this. <laughs> I don't really need the rest of it. The bass is, is the bass riff is cool. It's interesting, but I think it, what it's surrounded by is just makes it not not, uh, not quite up to to the interest level that I'm looking for. So that was 1986 Peel Session number 10. And you know what we've never done is check out this album art. <laughs> Should we flip over this album art? Or the Peel Session? <laughs> yep. What are we looking at? We're going to be looking at the, the only thing we can really look at, which is the compiled. Oh, the complete the complete Peel Sessions? The fall, the complete Peel Sessions album art. Let's take a look at this. It's got the official BBC stamp on the front. 
It looks like a brown paper bag that has been printed on with the fall. And it looks like it's almost hand printed by BBC. They did not want to spend any more money than was allowed for this. You could tell they definitely did not consult the band at all because there is not one single besides that the print of the the stamping of the fall name there is not one single handwritten word by mark no, or there's not, anyone there's, a, there's not even a period after the fall how are we supposed to know which band it is how are we supposed to know that that's the whole name <laughs> let's flip it over because let's just move forward <laughs> what is okay let's look at the back uh the listing of all of the sessions which is cool yeah it's 19th, a lot of information so a lot good. of information 1978 to 2004 now this i believe this is only on cd i've only yeah. seen it on cd so, yeah six cd set which i know it's a lot of music but I wonder, let me just try to do albums here. Let's see. Um, let's see how many LPs this would be. 12 LP set, probably. Are you looking for that uh, box set to be coming your way? I mean, I, Ooh. I, would, I would consider it. I don't know. These are cool. What's a fair are, price? 150 uh, bucks? 150 bucks? I've seen well, some of those box sets go like $200. But 10 is a lot. I mean, I don't know if I've seen a 10 pack. Now, I'm going to try to take a look at the inlays here. Is there any third? Okay, there's a cool picture of... Yeah, there's the one. I saw one picture. Studio. It looks like the control room of one of the BBC studios, which is cool. I always wanted to know what it looks like. It looks like they got a big ass, as you'd expect, uh, mixing console, a bunch of stuff on the table, no people in there, which is weird. A picture of John Peel and Mark at, I believe that's from his birthday celebration. Looks like the front of the studio entrance, the inside of the studio door with a bunch of stickers on it. Okay, there's cool stuff on the inside, at least in the in the pamphlet. Okay, let's. I'm going to read you what it says about this tenth session we just listened to. The tenth session represents the high water mark of the fall at the zenith of their beggars' banquet years. A brittle, fresh, hot aftershave bop writes large Smith's obsession with the U.S. garage punk. While other bands were flirting at the time with the movement that has become to be known as goth. <laughs> In quotations, uh, ROD and the Gross Chapel demonstrate the real dark, gnarled gothic rock. If this wasn't enough, US 80s and 90s is incredible with Simon Rogers machines hovering loudly above the mix. <laughs> you agree? Yeah, I mean, I think we that's what we said the machines, the machines <laughs> were the best part. I agree, I agree. I mean, I, I like goth, I think gothic rock is very very broad and i don't necessarily put the the fall at the top of that category but i like when they go there they go there well on this track now we're going into the i think that's enough with the album art because i think it's <laughs> i think i'm looking for a little bit more but let's go into session 11 which was recorded april 28th 1987 so we're heading into 1987 and this was broadcast in may 1987 and we got four more tracks and these are really interesting tracks really wild and maybe i should just read you this one too you want to hear what the bbc i do yeah right um let's see here session 11 this really is one of the very best sessions there i thought they said the last one was <laughs> this really is one of the very best sessions from the lp less year of 1987 which found the group turning in some of their best live performances australians in europe offers an opportunity to revisit an overlooked stage favorite of the era. Those with a lifelong distaste for all things raucous may want to switch off the track after two and a half minutes where the synth flourishes. Buried in Simon Rogers' mix on the hit, the North B-side are given full reign. Oh, so Simon Rogers is mixing these, uh, which makes sense because he's going to be coming into that producer role. It sounds not unlike Boston meeting Van Halen's jump. No, really. 
Oh, I think they're referring to hit the north. I don't hear that. I do not hear yeah, that. I was gonna say, uh, okay. That. No, okay. But I'm gonna be listening. We're gonna be listening for that together. Okay. Boston with intersected with Van Halen's jump. Okay. In sharp contrast, Twister from the following years, the Friends experiment, is a sharp return to full on fall, muddy Billy. <laughs> what is muddy Billy uh genre? Uh, I like that name. Hillbilly and uh Billy Rock. Grunge. And muddy and grunge. Water. It's when Muddy Waters meets uh Oh yeah, Muddy Waters. Guest informant, possibly the greatest fall song from the post Ben Sinister era, is here in one of its best readings, featuring one of Smith's greatest couplets. In the burning scorch of another Sunday half over, Hotel Back Garden resembled a 1973 Genesis album cover. I agree with that. That is a great line. Um, this sees uh, Smith truly selling England by the pound. All men, and let's face it, it is men of a certain age felt a certain glow. The building block Baroque of athlete cured closed this outstanding, astonishing session. Okay. I like, I like these little write-ups. This is kind of, that's pretty fun. So what are we starting off with here, Steve? I already forgot from reading that. This would be Australians in Europe. Terence Trent Darby, the first from him, and that's under my thumb, of course, as you probably spotted. And from the fall, and don't forget there's a new fall LP available at the end of February, I look forward to that a great deal, Australians in Europe. Australians in Europe, the first track leading off this 11th session by the fall. And we are going to be treated to, and I have to give a shout out because the YouTube channel Vibra Cobra 23 has a bunch of really great gems on that channel. But I think, thankfully, we're going to be listening to this session that contains the, the John Peel intros and outros to the tracks which is definitely the way to experience it and the fun way to get a little bit of a feeling like we're back sitting in front of that radio so let's get into australians in europe This song is so great in Mark's delivery and singing. Yeah, no, I mean, I, the, the speed and pace of all of these, uh, is that jump? Is that some jump I'm hearing? <laughs> uh, who knows, Mark might have been a big uh, Van Halen fan. I seriously doubt it. I highly, highly doubt it actually, but you never know. That might have been Simon Rogers. He was like, <laughs> you know, Simon Rogers is the classically trained musician. So he's like, well, you heard about this Eddie Van Halen? This guy is freaking the most musical American I've ever heard. <laughs> the sounds on this one are cool, though. I do give it. I think it's maybe that they think of that phaser affected synth or guitar playing that solo line. They think that's like a the jump. <laughs> yeah. Then honestly, this one is for me is Mark singing, holding those notes. Impressive. Smoking three packs a day and holding those long notes. His instrument always keeping that tuned up doing his exercises every morning 
Yep, gargling whiskey and kept this kept the pipes clear. Man. This song is riffing. I mean this song is rocking. What do you like about this one? Yeah, I mean this is you can just hear how awesome this would be live too, right? Like people just would be fucking oh, yeah. moving and Yeah. I mean it is live, but I know what you're saying, like in a club or like with an audience feeding back. Hmm. I do I do wonder what the sound of the like in maybe even a more sped up yeah like an amped up like let's go amped let's hit up. this yeah because it's got a lot of going on but it's good and it's six minutes long which is flies by I like that I know that Simon Rogers is producing these things now. Or the, uh, the, this session at least. This is definitely more off the wall than... Yeah, than it has been. Mm -hmm. Just this single piano note going... T -t 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 through it the whole time. Almost like a drone. Very nice. I like that. Great foundation. The fall could do with more than... Oh, let's listen to John. The saintly fall and the session version, of course, of Australians in Europe. And aren't you impressed with the fact that I'm something like 24 minutes into the program and haven't yet mentioned what I did over Christmas? Went to the pub, had a bit of a party, which I did my ancient mariner routine, and uh, wrote lots of letters. These are the Bundu boys, and dare to say... Lightning flashed. The wind howled. can do with some more uh, undertones just carrying the song through mm -hmm. besides this bass because mm -hmm. <clears throat> the bass is so repetitive usually that just a drone on top of that would be filling it up I think this oh, that was in Marcy that wasn't Morrissey that was the house Martins <laughs> I don't know though what are you gonna say but I think the Twister is going to be in the new Twisters movie they're making. I think it's the main song. Oh, they're making a new Twister movie? Yeah. Thank God. Uh, I've been waiting for that. I was just thinking the other day, when are they going to come out with another Twister movie? Twister 2. Okay, what do you, what do you think about this, this track? 
Um, I like how it starts normal and then just devolves into chaos. It does. It really does at the end. I, I just it, you're listening to a like oh okay this is a good song and then all of a sudden it just it just it feels like you're getting hit with a twister I I don't know it just feels like oh what's that in the distance this is fine and then all of a sudden you're getting thrown around. <laughs> I like the organ or keyboard on this one, but the rest of it, I'm just like, no, thanks. I don't. <laughs> the organ is so good. It's like, I almost wish it was just that. I also wonder why they couldn't come up with a different drum beat that was a little bit maybe more varied and in the number of <laughs> drums that were hit during each section, because it really is just so structured and use, using one part of the drum kit. Also, doesn't it seem like every time she says Twister, it's the same vocal tone and flex? She never really is changing it up and going, Twister, Twister. Like, she's not changing yeah. it at all. It's really the same. She should have used a little more of her bananas experience, experience Ooh, and got a little have... bit different noises going on. Yeah, I could have gone with a little. I think that maybe that's the key takeaway for me for this stretch is maybe a little bit more variation in all the parts besides the organ would be great. I like the transitions, the transitions between sections. Cool. Even the guitar sounds like there's like a strummed acoustic guitar at some points. He's going to go in and on the drums a little bit here. Yeah, but he's really just staying on the, the top. Yeah, you know? like, he's not going. No, and then he, not... gets a, he gets a cymbal at the end, right? It's like a. It's like, I'm done. <laughs> that was good at another part. Ah, couldn't you smack their little bottoms for them? That's the fall, of course, in session, and that's Twister. And for those of you who are Festive 50 fans, we'll be rejoining the Festive 50 in about uh, 21 minutes, I think, according to my calculations. No, 22 at number 30. And if I have time, I'll give you a rundown of what's happened so far. These are the Darling Buds, and this is Mary's Got to Go. <laughs> what's the Festive 50? Oh. Maybe it's the next music show that comes out. Tab 50, yeah. yeah. That's Soul Power from Terence Trent Darby, the James Brown number, as you will have spotted. And from the fall, in session, guest informant. Okay, guest informant. Now we're getting back to some. Now we're back into fall. What the fall do best? Do you know anything about guest informant? Do I know anything about it? No, you feel anything about this one? Hey. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> uh. <laughs> no. I like how funky they're getting in general. Just like yeah. the the yeah. layers, like we said, the different layers they're putting into it is. It does have funkiness with that organ, like almost like a weird garage rock throwback. Especially when in the middle, Mark's spitting the lyrics over just like a little groove and rhythm section. Just in full men, say. 
I've been split on. I've been tw- I've been touted on. I had not counted on the guest informants. Baghdad spacecock analyst. I could not comprehend. I could not understand. I had not counted on. I had not counted all guest informants. I've been split by a first grade moron. <laughs> I really like the beginning where he's just kind of talking about following the colonel to the cheap motel. And then finding, <laughs> uh, he's like, like going around looking in the room and then, then say, talking about how he wired the phones. Uh, maybe, maybe wired them for, Espionage? Hey, yeah, I imagine, know. right? Yeah. Spacecock analyst. Hmm. Yeah, this is good. This is good, Mark. This green photo for this YouTube video is Mark is just staring into my soul. I do like the photo. The green tint is weird, yellow tint. And then it ends with a big old clatter. You won't be surprised to learn that I'm rather hopeful that we'll get them in for a new session fairly early in 1988. Whenever I mention it to Walters, he sort of hums and haws a bit and changes the subject, but I'm sure I'll bring him round to my way of thinking eventually. Those were The Fall, of course, and Guest Informant, and that was for Eric Bainbridge. The Electro Hippies and Chickens. The Night Kids. I must say, Eric B and Rakim and paid in full, and I know that Eric B and Rakim themselves apparently didn't entirely approve of this version of their work, the Seven Minutes of Madness, the Cold Cut remix, but the Cold Cut people gave me so much pleasure during the year, and in fact they've got a new one, which I think you're going to quite like, I'm going to play it next Monday, and uh, so I felt they deserved some sort of reputa- uh, representation, and that was my... Yeah, did you remember anyway, Smell so Like Hot Dogs? Uh, this is at number 26. <laughs> Get him back in there, John. Get them back in the studio. When I fall in love, it will be forever. Just kidding, but I had you worried there for a moment. This is actually number 26 from our session. Okay, we're wrapping it up. Athlete cured. Athlete's foot cured. I think it was carbon monoxide poisoning. For what? That's what he was cured of. He was cured of carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh. From his brother's Volkswagen. But the cure is, it's in no, no form of a pill. This is going to be something completely different. A p- completely different prescription. Oh man, that bass is fucking heavy. That's my favorite Steve Hamley bass tone is when it's so distorted and he's still playing the bouncy riff with that distortion. 
Oh, that's great. That's the real fall sound. Because he could do anything in, in the between. He could do clean, plucky sound where it's always like, you know, tinny sounding. But then when he gets real blown out, oh, kind of going back to what we were talking about, like having a drone sound. Just fill in the space on the bottom. And Steve can do it. Yeah, he, he, he dances around the bass for sure. Mm hmm. And how do you like these backing vocals? Because they're very interesting. Yeah, I, I never heard him do that before. I wonder who it is. I mean, it's a low voice. Duh, duh. Hard to tell who it is. This, these lyrics are so, <laughs> it's so good. It's so wild. It's bizarre. It's, it's, it's so a good. story. I just like wow. Yeah. It's, it's like a Mark short story mind. There's so there's so many false songs where you're just like, oh, that's of course. You know, that's it's not surprising. It's just, and it's also not surprising that it's so good. But a lot of them are just like, oh, that's definitely something Mark likes to write about. But this is something where you're just like, how did he? As I say, every once in a while, how did he come up with it? It's, it's so a great. creative, creative art piece, right? Like, right. You're like, yeah. What's all right? Give me a, give me a character and uh, something that happened to him. Oh, yeah. East a German athlete sick. What happened, Mark? Okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah. This room smelled like hot dogs, that's for sure. <laughs> and then, let's see. Uh, the open windows of the athletic stars upstairs bedroom. Just one line is just already putting you... Right? And, and then anything can happen. And then uh, what happens is definitely not what you expect to happen. Well, and it, it, may, it probably all stemmed from this other line. Citizens in my street are also partial to this. Just yeah. staring out the window all day, like, why are these people leaving their cars running mm -hmm. all day long? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. gonna have to write something about this. Yep, that carbon monoxide just wafting up there, exhaust fumes. Oh man, he's back on his megaphone, which we've already established is for me not necessary, but especially when you have such good word, <laughs> you got such good words. Just come on, Mark. Add a bunch of weird ass effects like Simon Rogers wants to do. Just do it. You don't need yeah, to do that. Exactly. Way better to act, add an actual effect versus. I mean, it's just like. It's just a toy, right? This is a new yeah, toy a that toy. he is excited yeah. about. It's also the toy that he's in control of. Exactly. So it's, much, it's yeah. you know, obviously yeah. more accessible. He understand. Him. He understands how it works. He doesn't have yeah. to ask him for anybody else's help. Yeah. He can just make like it a tape recorder yeah. has one he, button. He can make it do what he wants. It's not no complicated. Mm -hmm. I like the laser sounds, static, whatever that is. It's really good, right? So musical, even though it's just a staticky synth sound. You're super sore away number 26 in this year's Festive 50. That's the fall, of course, taken from the session. Don't forget that LP at the end of, of, of February. I keep mentioning that. That's Athlete Cured. And this is at number 20... Hold on a second, am I right? Yes, this is at number 25. Okay, so that was... That was it. That was good. <laughs> that was real. That was real interesting, as as we were expecting. Um, and every time, it just like give you something else, something fresh to listen to. So, what? Uh, which one are you taking? Which one are you taking? We got 1986 session. We only get one per year now. Kind of sucks, but we got 1986 session. We got this last 1987 session. 
I think I know. Are you still sticking with it? I don't think so. No, I think I'm Ooh. going. Oh, first man. one. I, I came in thinking I was going with the second one. See, and I actually feel like I'm flopping on mine where I, I like, I thought I liked that first one, but the second session it keeps giving me more things to to catch you know like i'm i'm, yeah. I'm fishing i'm fi that lure is getting pulled every time i drop it into any one of these songs yeah i think oh. for i think for the pure difference of sound that i'm used to I, i'm going with session number two honestly if twister is not on session the second session i'm easily picking it but since it is that's that's five minute song that I don't need. <laughs> that's five minutes out of 17 minutes. You know, that's a lot. And even though I'm not totally digging US 80s and 90s or Hot After Shave Bop, both of those versions are so good on that first session that they're the best one. So, I'm, oh man, I think I'm going to go. But I do like Van Halen, so <laughs> no, I'm gonna go first session 1986. But man, this 1987 session is always gonna be getting uh probably uh, the focus of my attention when I put it on. I yeah. think that's what I like about it is it, it takes more attention than the than the first one. Mm -hmm. And it's also heading into the fall's new territory, which is this territory that they're going into which is cool i always i do appreciate that away about, from john leckie <laughs> about the peel sessions that they are kind of a window into the future almost mm -hmm. yeah they are and a very clear window well defined because they never really throw something in there and then be like oh it's like yeah, well, I mean, they they might throw in a song a bit. No, we're not going to do that one ever again. But they're never throwing a song in there, and then when the album comes out, it's drastically, <laughs> you know, far off of what what they what they showed us a few months beforehand, or even at the club seeing them at the show. So, great two sessions, great job, John Peel once again for letting these lads get back in the studio. And Bricks and Simon and Simon and Craig and Steve and Mark. Great bunch. So listen to both. Listen to if anyone has the 1986 session recorded from the radio, like this 87 one, uh, please send it our way. And until next time, get us get on to Patreon. Join us. Get, you know. Hang out with us a little bit more if you want to. Otherwise, until next time, we are the fall. We are the best. <laughs>